Welcome to lesson three on Unity tutorials and on this one we are going to now create a very simple user interface and I do mean very simple. Okay, so we're in Unity, we've got our little game where we can we can walk around and we can collect some coins and the only way we know to collect some coins is it pops up in our console mode. So what I'm going to do is go on game object, UI and we're going to add a canvas. Now the canvas um, is basically where we can put text boxes, buttons and all sorts of other UI components. You can see it's already come there called canvas. I'm just going to leave it as canvas for now. Um, I'd urge you to, to give things sensible names. Right now we're not doing very good project management. Um, but if we can zoom right out, so if I click on canvas and press F to focus, that's how big our canvas is. It is much, much bigger than the world. doesn't matter what we're about to do. But if we were to say doing a VR game, we have to scale this down and put it inside the world space itself. Okay, so here is our canvas. I'm going to click on canvas and I'm going to go UI, add text. So this is going to give us a little text box to play with. Uh, the text box is right in the middle and I can come down to this, this screen. New text where I can put things like number of it doesn't matter uh, number of coins it doesn't matter what i write here because we're going to go overwrite it in code anyway um you know we could put the title of the game coin collector uh, although i'm hoping by now you guys have come up with something a little more imaginative um i'm going to change the color of the writing i'm just going to go with yellow um because yellow is quite a high contrasty color and it'll stand out against all of our current game settings uh, but again you'll need to experiment with your color themes okay so I've got a color um, that's how yeah okay I'm gonna leave it as that is for now I'm gonna move it now I can move this just the same way as anything else but if I scale it um, it scales the right as well which is fine but you can see it got a bit pixelated there so you might want to change the size of your font um, just gonna pull that in a bit now also it's only gonna fit that text and so if I put a new line on number of coins uh, timer, score, etc, etc. It's not displaying it all because the text box isn't big enough. So I'm just going to come to where it says width and height. I'm going to make it 300 wide. I'm going to make it 300 high. Um, so again, I need to move it now again. Uh, and if I press play, we should be able to see this in view. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't matter what your camera's doing your scoreboard now tracks to it because if we look down here it does say canvas renderer where's it gone to um, I've lost it there's a little part wake but it lets you choose I'm on text aren't I not canvas click on canvas there we go screen space overlay screen space camera and world space um, if we do a VR game later we'll be looking at world space okay so I want to change this writing so what I need to do is I'm going to go back into my code. I'm going to use my main game function for this. Now I could separate another script for creating the UI in, but for now I'm just going to keep it just here. What I want to do is create a link to that text box so that in the code I can just update it from here. So again, public, because I need everyone to be able to see it, public, um, text, because it's a text box. Now, it doesn't actually recognise it. It's not auto-filling. It doesn't know what to do. And that's fine. I'm just going to include the library using Unity Engine dot UI. Um, semicolon to finish the line. Okay, so now when I go public text, it now knows what text is. I'm just going to call it UI text. Now, this is where we should also be thinking of something kind of meaningful. Um, I'm going to see if this works now. In the update, in fact, in start, we'll do it in start. I'm going to put UI text dot text equals hello gamers. Um, again, we're going back to the hello world type tutorials just to see if this actually works. Now, when I come back into Unity, um, it's going to compile the script. There we go. I'm going to go back onto my main game. There's my code. If we notice, it's now got this global variable. Now, this is something I didn't show in the past few videos about public. If I click on the coin, the coin had now got the value 10. If I want to change the 10, I could say this value is 20. 
so I don't have to go into the code to make any changes. Just like in the coin, in the player mover, in the player move. Um, where's player gone? I've lost him. as a capsule. There we go. Um, player, where's the script? Move character. Speed, 5. I can change that to 10, change to 15. It means the level designer can change these parameters without having to go back into code. It makes developing game environments really quick. Um, so, I'm back on canvas, back on text. Um, I need to click on my main game. That's where it gets a bit tricky. No, it should be fine. UI text. I'm going to drag text over onto UI text. The reason why I say it's tricky is what some people will do. They'll click on main game. Oh, yeah, I'll drag it over there. I'll click on canvas. Oh, I've lost it. So it's it's a bit tricky. You've just got to make sure that you don't click and let go. You click and drag. Um, so now my main game knows that my UI text is linking back to this text box. So when I press play, it should delete all that text and leave it with hello gamers. There we go, it's done it. So now I can go back into the code. Obviously I don't want that at all. Um, I can now get rid of, of this. Nope, I'm gonna, I'll leave that there for the moment. But in update, I can now create a string. Now I'm doing a string for a reason. Um, I want to create all the right I'm going to put into it and then copy it in one go. I'm just going to call it a temp. So it's a temporary string equals timer. Um, now right now we are, don't we don't have a timer. We will have a timer soon. Um, we've got timer and now I can say temp plus equals. So this is going to append whatever I write next to this string. So it's just going to keep adding to it. It just makes handling things a little bit easier. So slash n, slash n means new line. Um, slash n, number of coins. And then I'm now just going to put plus, main, actually we're in main game, aren't we? So I don't need to do that. I should be able to go number of coins. There we go, that's happy. Um, I was waiting for an error to come up there. So now it's going to add whatever value is in number of coins to our string. I can then find that by going UI text dot text equals temp. Uh, it's not very processor efficient to do sort of UI updates this frequently. We don't need to. It's not changing very often. But for now, we're going to leave it there. Okay. So back into Unity itself. We'll see updating the code. The only reason I put the writing there like that is so I can line things up and test things while I'm in the editor, otherwise it would be blank. Okay, so when I press play, hopefully if I've done this correctly, there we go, we've got one coin, two coins, three coins, yay, okay. Now, there's something else I want us to do, which is how many coins are left in the game? How do we know when we've collected them all? Because we could now spend forever looking. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is, <coughs> excuse me, is at the beginning, we want to count how many coins we have got. Okay, so what we're going to do is we need to do a, a count up of how many coins we've got. So I'm going to create another variable. Um, public, now we could just tell it. We could just say public static float um, max num of coins or total number of coins whichever in fact yeah let's look a total num of coins equals zero now what we could do we could save this we could go back into unity we could then wait if that's compile we could go well we've got we've got five coins so let's just type in why has that not appeared? I expect that to appear by now. Did I not save it properly? That's a little bit unusual. Doesn't really matter. There we go, my mistake. Um, because it's now doesn't need to be a static number of coins because no one else is expecting um, Working on this one, I've just took the word static out. And now it's not static, it's appeared total number of coins. Notice also being clever and it's put spaces in 
between where I did my camel case style writing. So I could just go, well, well, there's five coins. So on main game, let's type in five. But then what happens if you, the game designer or some other game designer, starts adding loads more coins um, and, and then you forget to update it? It now throws the game out. So why not have the computer count how many coins are in there? So go back in the code. I'm going to say um, total number of coins equals, oh, it's on the wrong line, don't like that. Total number of coins equals game object, I've got cap blocks on, dot find, find game objects with tag. I want to find the coins. So I'll put coin dot length. Okay, so. Um, I've now, I'm going to look for all the coins, and the dot length is how many is it found, because this will return an array of, of coins, and we'll know how many, how long that list of coins is. So now I can, just, just to see if it's working, I can put debug.log. Um, I mean, although I've got a UI now, I could actually, um, I could just simply write it to the, to the UI instead. But I want to make sure this is working, because I actually know it's not going to work. For something I didn't already do. So if I just clear console, why is that not clearing? My unit seems to have frozen. My unit just sort of froze there for a moment. Let's try again. So if I now press play, coin not defined because I haven't told you what the coin is. So if I click on our coin prefab, back, back on there, coin prefab, um, what's that going to do? Untagged. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say add a tag. I'm going to press on plus. Coin. So now we've got a coin, but our coin prefab isn't actually tagged yet. So I now need to go on there and go coin. So now hopefully when I close this down, um, go back into our scene. If I click on the coin, it's now a coin. If I click on any of them, it's a coin. That's the reason why the prefab is so important. I made the change once and it filtered through all of the others. So now when I try to run it, we've got five. There we go. We've got five coins. So I can now go back to my UI. Back to my UI. Um, this is again why I like to do the temp thing. So number of coins, plus number of coins, I can now put plus of, plus, sorry, speech marks, not plus, um, total number of coins. So now it's going to say number of coins, uh, you know, well, let's go, let's go and have a look. I'm sure it'll make sense. So now when I press play, just be patient. Doesn't normally take this long. Press play. We should have now got. There we go. Number of coins. Not of five. One of five. Two of five. And I think you kind of get the picture now. Three of five. And of course, we then write some form of if statement that if they are the same, if the number of coins collected is the same as total coins, then it's go to the next level quit the game do do whatever's going to happen next okay i think that's that for this lesson in our next lesson we are going to look at creating a countdown timer so thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one